welcome to Mrs. Packnell's Maths Lessons. Now, I've got my 100 square out, but I've got a bit of an issue with the sunshine. I'm just going to pull my blind a little more. I don't know if that's going to help because it's super, super sunny today. So I've got elements of sun on my 100 square, but hopefully you can see it, particularly if I prop it up. Okay, so <clears throat> this lesson is on time, but I never like you to forget your counting. So this week, and we haven't done this for a while, we're going to count in ones all the way to 100, okay? So it's going to take us a little while, as counting in ones often does, but um, I know we can do it brilliantly. Let's go high on the multiples of five and low on the multiples of ten with our voices, okay? So, are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 19, 20. I'm going to slow down my voice now to give you more of a chance to say them. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Going on to the 40s now, always has a 4 in the first column. 41, 42, 43, 44. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Now the 50s all have a 5 in the first column. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Now on to all the 70s with a 7 in front. 71, 72, 71. 73, but in the sunshine there, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, let me lift it up, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, last row, all the 90s, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, fantastic, it takes a while doesn't it, but you did it, so well done. Okay, using my 100 square, can you point to the screen for the number four? Where is the number four? There is the number four. Now, can you use your pointy finger to point to the number nine? Where is the number nine? Do not get him confused with the number six. Where is the number nine? There he is. He's right at the top of the camera, so hopefully you can see him fine. Okay, going a little higher, can you point to the number 12? We often get 12 mixed up with 20, but obviously it's going to come after 11. So here is 12, one more than 11. Can you point to the number 15? 15, 15, mm, comes after 14, there it is. Go a little higher for those that need to be stretched. If they're getting too high, don't worry, just watch where I point afterwards. 
Can you point to the number 20, 28, 28? So here are all the 20s. They have a 2 in front. I'm looking for 28. There it is. Right, two more real biggies. Can you point to the number 64, 64, 64? Here are all the 60s, 64. And one more super big one. <clears throat> Can you point to the number 89, 89, 89? Here it is. 89 with an 8 in the first column. Fabulous. Okay, I'm now going to ask you a couple of one more than questions. And then I'm going to go on to two more just to stretch some of you. But one more, first of all. Remember to find one more. You look at the number I'm asking and then you jump on one more to add on an extra number. Okay, so you can use the 100 square to help if you want. If you don't need it, close your eyes so that you can just do it from your memory. Okay. So close your eyes now if you don't want to look at the 100 square. Can you tell me one more than five? Nice, easy one to warm up with. One more than five, what comes after five? Six. One more than eight. One more than eight is nine. Let's go a little higher. Uh, let's go with 13. One more than 13. One more than 13. Here it is, jump on one more. One more is 14. Let's go a little higher. One more than 28. One more than 28 is 29. Fantastic. Now, for those of you who are finding that a bit super easy, let's go for two more, okay? When you're finding two more, so if I say two more than six, you gotta add on two more numbers. Jump two more numbers along and that will be the answer where you land after two jumps, okay? so. Uh, two more than seven. Two more than seven. So two jumps on will take you to nine. Two more than 16. Two more than 16. There's 16. One jump, two jumps, two more is 18. Uh, let's just go in the 20s. Two more than 23. Two more than 23. One jump, two jumps, two more than 23 is 25. Fabulous if you got those right. Okay, let's pop that to one side and then we're going to have a look. So I would have done, if we were in class as well, catch one partner again, which is where you all walk around with something in your hand and you have to find a partner with their hand up and ask them the same question to everybody that you meet. And it would have been that you would have all had a 3D shape in your hand and you would have gone up to anyone with their hand in the air who needed a partner and you would have all said, what is the name of my 3D shape? Now we can't do that because we're all at home at the moment. So my suggestion is if you're in my class, you have had flashcards. Mm, I think I've given you the 3D flashcards. I have trouble remembering at this point. Uh, it's all gone into a bit of a blur. I know you've got 2D, maybe you haven't got 3D. Mm. If you have, and I have sent them home and I'm super organized, then use those cards to have a little flashcard session of those, okay? If you haven't got them at home, maybe you could find some images on the internet and just say, what's this one called? What's this one called, okay? Right, but moving on from that. Okay, I want to go through some o'clock times with you. All right, so first of all, I'm just gonna show you some times and then I want you to tell me what o'clock they are. Then it's gonna get a little trickier in that I'm gonna ask you what will the time be an hour later. But let's just stick to you telling me what the times are first of all, okay? So remember, if it's something o'clock, the long minute hand has to be pointing straight up to the 12 and then it's something o'clock. So don't forget the o'clock on the end, okay? The smaller, shorter, should I say, the shorter hour hand is what o'clock it is, okay? So if this is pointing straight up, okay, if that one's pointing straight up, the minute hand, you know it's something o'clock. You then have to look to where the short hour hand is pointing to work out that this is one o'clock, all right? So I'm going to whisper a couple. Okay, what is my time now? My minute's hand is pointing straight up, so it's something o'clock. It is 
three o'clock. Right, let's have a go at this one. What time is it now? It is six o'clock. Number one. Long hand is straight up. We know it's something o'clock. What o'clock is it? Eight o'clock. And last one is this one. What is my time now? Long hand is straight up. Short hand is pointing at the 10. So it is 10 o'clock. Okay, now I'm going to ask you, and if you had clocks of your own in class, I'd get you to make the time to show me, but you're just going to have to shout out to the camera or tell your adults. What would the time be if it was one hour later than 10 o'clock? Okay, so imagine we started our maths lesson at 10 o'clock and it took a whole hour. What time would it finish? So this is a bit worded, a bit like a problem solving question. Okay, so one hour later than 10 o'clock. So I'm going to help you with this first one and then see if you can tackle some of the others before I'm telling you. So 10 o'clock at the moment, if we go one hour, watch this minute hand, it's going to go all the way around the clock, okay, to tackle its 60 minutes in one hour. And so once that long hour hand's gone all the way around once, okay, just stop as soon as it's gone all the way around once, that will be a whole hour. So as long as that takes to go all the way around and back again to the top, one hour has passed. So we can tell that one hour later than 10 o'clock is 11 o'clock, okay? So it's 11 o'clock now. I'm going to then do phonics. Let's say phonics takes a whole hour, okay? We start at 11 o'clock. What will the time be when we finish? What will the time be one hour later than 11 o'clock? One hour on. So have a go. Tell your adults. It's a tricky question, so don't worry if I'm not sure. But let's watch this minute hand go all the way around for 60 minutes. So that'll be a whole hour tipped past. What will the time be when it comes back up to the o'clock? So one hour later than 11 o'clock, we can see because our little hour hand is hidden behind, they're both pointing to 12. It would be 12 o'clock. Let's have one more go. Let's whiz it round to here. Okay, it's now the afternoon. All right, it's two o'clock. Let's say you go out and play in the snow for an hour. So you start playing at two o'clock, you play for a whole hour. What will the time be when you finish? A whole hour later. Tell your adults, what do you think the o'clock time will be in an hour's time, an hour later than two o'clock? Okay, let's see what it will be. Watch this minute's hand. It's going to tick all the way around the clock, which will be 60 minutes, because there's 60 minutes in one hour. Watch it go all the way around until it points back up at the o'clock. So an hour later would be three o'clock. It's just like counting, isn't it? Okay, so it's like doing one more. One hour more than, one more than. So one more than three or one hour more than three o'clock would be four o'clock. One more than four or one hour more than four o'clock would be five o'clock. It's just like doing your one mores, except you've got to remember to say o'clock. Right, okay, fabulous work with o'clock this week. Really impressive. Now, your last task, this is quite a nice short lesson today. Your last task I'm gonna leave you doing, but I will model you mine first is to make your own analog watch, okay? So a watch is an analog clock, well it doesn't have to be analog, but it's a clock that goes on your arm, okay? A clock might go on the wall, or you might see clocks on your cooker, in your car, on phones, okay? They are clocks, but when it's worn on your wrist, here, here is your wrist, it's called a watch. It does the same job as all those clocks hanging on walls, but for some reason we call the one on our wrist a watch, okay? Sometimes a wrist watch as well. So another task as well after this is to look around your house and count how many clocks you can see in your house, okay? You can sometimes see them as analog ones, which is our face here. But I'll have a look on your um, oven clock. 
to see a digital clock, okay? I won't show you mine because I'd have to undo the camera and everything, but look on your oven and see if there's a digital clock on there. It will have numbers next to each other for the hours and the minutes, okay? So check out a digital clock at home. Sorry I couldn't show you on here because although it's saying three o'clock up here, the digital time is saying four o'clock underneath. So I won't confuse you with my clock that seems to be misbehaving, okay? But see how many clocks you can find, both digital and analog in your house. We're going to make an analog wrist watch today. So I'm gonna get my scissors, there they are. Now I'm gonna cut my strap off of my piece of card first. So here is my strap and that I will end up sellotaping around my arm. Okay, so there's my strap to be wearing on my wrist. Now I need to stick my analog clock face. Now I'm gonna go with a circle one because that's what we've been looking at all week. I might draw around something circular to help me out. Hmm, what have I got? Let's have a look. Have I got anything that's really cool? I'm gonna go around my pineapple. Okay, so I'm gonna put my pineapple onto my piece of card and I'm going to draw. It's a bit knobbly actually because it's a pineapple, but I'm gonna draw my circle around my pineapple. Better things might be like a bowl or a big teacup if you've got one handy. It's got to be fairly big, all right? Bigger than probably a normal analog clock face or watch face rather, because you've got to try and get 12 numbers around the edge and you'd have to write super small, which isn't always easy, okay? So I'm going to cut out my circle now and that will go on. It's going to go on here like this. But I need to add my numbers to it. So I know what goes at the top, which number is right at the top that the o'clock hand points to. It is the number 12. So I'm going to pop him in there. Whoops, my pen's not quite working. There's number 12. Okay. Then I've got to think to myself, what goes directly underneath the 12 at the bottom? So what goes right at the bottom of the clock? It's the number 6. Okay. Then I'm thinking to myself, what starts to tick around on this side? So what comes over here? It is the number three is in that very far corner there. And then opposite number three, what comes here? If you've got a clock at home to help you, then have a look. It's the number nine. Now, when you've got all these numbers in place, it makes it really easy to fill in the missing ones leading up to it now, okay? Much easier to do. Um, if you've got a clock at home, use it to help you, all right? Some clocks don't put in all the, all the numbers. They sometimes just have these ones, and you have to guess roughly where the ones and the twos would go. But let's do them all in. Let's make this a nice, easy-to-read clock. Those clocks are always very tricky. So it doesn't carry on after 12. It goes back to 1 again. So 1 needs to come next. And then obviously more, 1 more than 1 is 2. <clears throat> so 1, 2, 3. So then we need to fit in four and five, leading up to the six. Four, five. We've got six. So after six comes seven and eight, leading up to the nine. Seven, eight, leading up to the nine. And then we've got to squeeze in 10 and 11, and that will take us to 12. So 10 and 11. And there you go. That way you can make sure you spread your numbers out perfectly around the clock and they won't all be bunched up on one side and then you run out of room or you've got too much room. So there's your analog clock face. You can choose a time on it. I am going to go for this time. So I'm going to put a dot in the middle. Okay, so in the middle of all the numbers, there's my dot and that's where my hands will come out of. My long hand is pointing straight up to the 12. So it's going to be something o'clock. And I think I'm going to go for my shorthand pointing to the four. So I can see that's a much longer hand. Make sure your longer hand is quite clear. And then my shorter hour hand is telling me it's four o'clock. So it's four o'clock on my watch. Then I will stick it on with a piece of tape, making sure that the 12 and the six are at the top and the bottom. And then I can stick it to my arm and all day long I've got a watch on. People can ask you what the time is. Okay, so that is your task at the end of this lesson to make your own analogue uh, watch. And, um, and then, yeah, you can go around and tell people all the time. Have yourself a fantastic half term break. We will get back together after that where we will start a new maths topic. I'll see you then. Take care.